Welcome to episode 39 of the Snowflake Snow Pro Advanced Architect Certification in Depth Training Podcast, where today we'll delve deep into the intricacies of security integrations in Snowflake. As your host, Yakub Abdul Hakim, I bring my experience as a certified Snowflake user to guide you through this critical topic aiming to equip you with the knowledge to not only understand but excel in your certification exam. Security is paramount in today's data-driven environment and Snowflake provides a robust framework to ensure your data is protected. The platform's security integrations allow for seamless compatibility with third-party tools and services, ensuring a comprehensive security posture. Now, let's unravel the layers of security integrations within Snowflake, exploring how this can empower your Snowflake architecture. Firstly, we'll tackle authentication. Snowflake supports multiple authentication methods including standard username and password SSO single sign-on through SAML 2.0 and multi-factor authentication MFA offering layers of security to prevent unauthorized access. Moreover, Snowflake also allows for key pair authentication, giving users the ability to authenticate using public and private keys, offering another layer of protection. Furthermore, when we dive into authorization, it's imperative to understand the distinction between authentication and authorization. Authentication is all about verifying identity whilst authorization determines what an authenticated user is permitted to do. Snowflake employs role-based access control, RBAC, to manage user permissions with finesse. This method ensures that access to data is tightly controlled and users are only allowed to perform actions as per their roles. Additionally, Snowflake's integration with external OAuth providers adds another dimension of security, allowing secure token-based access to resources within Snowflake. This not only simplifies the management of credentials, but also enhances security by minimizing the risk of credential theft. Now let's pivot to network policy. 